Welcome to the Wedco Podcast, where wedding wisdom meets street smarts. We're dishing out all the tips, tricks, and wedding goss to take your wedding to the next level. Time to ditch the formalities and get this party started. Yeah! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wedco Podcast. I'm Togger from the Togger Zinis. And I'm Joel from Wonder and Follow Images and we're here at the beautiful Gavin Bar Homestead. And today we have Rachel and Chloe on the podcast with us. Thank you so much for having us here. Thanks for having us. It's, Lovely um, to be here. It's from Gavin Bar. Yes, <laughs> thank yes. You. <laughs> thank, no, thank you so much for having us up here. Um, yeah, I mean, Joel's here every weekend anyway. <laughs> He's got a bedroom in the back. Um, but yeah, seriously, it's thank comfy. you for having us up here. <laughs> it's amazing. Thank and you. ever since we started, like this was a very, very high on our list to come up yeah. here and yeah, so just thank you. <laughs> it was worth pleasure. getting up at four o'clock for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to just start with a little bit about yourself and like the role within Gavin Bar? Yeah, absolutely. So my name's Rachel and I'm the venue manager here at Gavin Bar. Um, I've been here for six years now and I started as a wedding and event planner during that time. Um, I have worked in customer experience here at Gavin Bar and now lead the venue um, and have the wedding planning team, the front of house team and the kitchen team um, work with me in my role. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Hectic. Yeah. And my name's Chloe. I'm the sales and marketing manager here at Gabin Bar. Um, I've been with the business for five years and I've always done the marketing and sales component. Um, I now have a team of two, um, oh, sorry, three under me. So a sales team leader, um, creative designer and a social media person as well. And yeah. So good. Every time we're here for weddings, it feels like there's, you know, a hundred people around. There is a lot of <laughs> staff here every time. And I think that's why, you know, one of the reasons we can delve into like why it just works so well up here. Mm. What does the overall team like in-house look like at Gavin Bar? Absolutely. So um, we have a team of four full-time wedding planners at Gavin Bar mm. and they um, essentially post-sale um, look after the couple mm -hmm. um, in the lead up to the wedding day and then on the wedding day. Um, our front of house team is made up of two full timers and then um, lots of casual staff as well. Um, we have a setup team, an operations team, a large kitchen team. Mm. Um, and then kind of as a broader overview, we do have like a, an accounts department, a HR and workplace health and safety as well. Yeah. I was just interested, this is kind of off topic, but just even like as far as, you know, it's a big rural city, I guess, Toowoomba, mm -hmm. but even as far as having the amount of staff you have here, is everyone pretty local around here or do you have to get like source people from Brisbane and stuff? Yeah, great question. Um, most of our staff are all local, which is yeah. great. So they're often um, uni students or have second jobs, um, but most of them are local. Okay. Yeah, yeah. awesome. And what's a typical year as far as the amount of weddings on average that Gavin Bar could do or does do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we can, or we host about 220 weddings a year at Gavin Bar. Wow. Um, so we are pretty busy year round. We yep. definitely see like spring and autumn being more popular in terms of wedding months, but um, winter and summer also um, yeah. have like a high turnover of weddings as well. Yeah. Are you guys, do you guys have like a block out day that you're like, no, don't do weddings on a Monday or is it just every and any kind of yeah, I think um, we'll do weddings seven days a week if yeah. we can. Yeah. Um, I think the only day we really don't offer is Christmas Day. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's just probably because we haven't been asked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Christmas weddings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. And so um, 220, obviously a lot. You've got four, four wedding planners that mm -hmm. will look after the weddings after the booking stage. Yes. Um, do you guys do like, you know, everyone's kind of doing the big open days or the trails or something like that. Do you guys do like a big open day or anything here? We haven't done open days here in the past. Um, yep. It's definitely something that we have on our radar for the future. Yep. Um, but we like to take a more personalised approach to our mm. viewings for our new couples. So we host um, viewings any day of the week and yep. it's an hour, an hour time slot with either Chloe, myself or Ange. Yep. Um, and we show them around the homestead, the estate, and then we chat with them about the package and the inclusions, um, discuss available dates. Mm. And we kind of have taken that more personalised approach for viewings. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Rather mm. than having like a big group and show you know 10 or different you know 20 couples around at the same time absolutely we yeah. find that everyone's got a lot of questions and it's yeah. really nice to be able to tailor their wedding to them yeah. um, and being able to just have that one-on-one -on -one time and build that connection with the couple to really deliver on their day yeah, yeah. I find a lot of the weddings that we do like Joel does here is a lot of destination weddings mm. is that a majority of the weddings coming up here like people flying in for destinations or yeah definitely we do uh I would say about 95 percent mm of yeah. our weddings aren't local. Yeah. Um, so we definitely have set ourselves up as a destination wedding venue. Um, we have couples, I think we've had couples from Russia. We just mm -hmm. had a couple from Paris book. Wow. 
Um, so our team have become experts in helping couples plan yeah. destination weddings. Yeah, that's what we were wondering. Like how do you guys kind of what, – what's like your process in helping people that are in Paris or Russia or something like that to be able to figure out if this is the venue for them? Yeah, well, I think um, I guess – making our website as informative as possible, responding to couples as soon as they inquire. Mm. But then once they've booked, we've built our own CRM system mm. um, and we built that from the ground up. We designed awesome. it um, based on our experiences and we've um, continually um, added to it and enhanced yeah. it. Yeah. And it means that couples get their own login uh, wherever they are in the world. They can yeah log in, they can invite um, other people in with them. Yeah, uh, right. They can communicate with our team. Our mm. team works seven days a week. We'll mm. always respond within 24 hours. Um, we can do Zoom planning meetings, mm. phone planning meetings. There's all so, like, like client portal where they can yeah, get onto. Oh, wow. That's right. And, Amazing. Um, then just get the same access. So yeah, they okay. will have um, a login to it's my Gavin Bar. Things. Yeah. yeah. So great. Yeah. And they'll see all the details for the couple's day. They can um, correspond with our team. Oh, so wow. it just has really created this one-stop shop for basically from the moment you inquire with us yep. to fair, like farewelling you um, when you pick up your items the next day, everything is delivered through my Gabin Bar. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I didn't know that. I didn't really? No, I didn't. Um, like, I, I mean, I shot weddings here 10 plus years ago. Was like, I mean, I was very naive then. I kind of just shot weddings. I was like, yeah, cool, beautiful venue and kind of moved on. Yeah. Has has it been a big shift to be like you guys, I would say, are probably like the highest end as far as, you know, wedding venues around this region? Yeah, for sure. Have you, has it always been that way? Yes, like, I yeah, would say yeah, we're so. we're the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. yeah. yeah. I think at the core of our DNA has always been that desire to be exceptional mm -hmm. um, and to be innovative. Mm -hmm. And we always joke and say that Gavin Bar nothing ever stays the same and sometimes we <laughs> we wish that it would um so I just think change is part of who we mm. are and we are constantly looking at what we do and asking how we can do it better mm. adapting and changing and I know from the moment that I joined the business that that is just the way we are mm. yeah yeah and I mean it's phenomenal like even like uh do you want to touch on the, the, the grounds here as well like I know there's the grounds here are phenomenal. Yep. They looked after it really well. I feel like we need to give some credit to them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think there'd be very few other venues that would have four gardeners who are here every day tending the mm. gardens. And I know that it's lovely when I walk around and I just see people working and you just have that sense of mm. this is a, a legacy that people are maintaining day in, day out. Definitely. And the gardens are something that we... I just extremely proud of and we just really love. <laughs> yeah. Even if and, it's different. Oh, sorry. Go. Well, I was even going to say uh, like how you were saying it's, it's never the same. Um, rocking up this morning, obviously Steve said I'm here a lot and I was like, oh, there's handrails. And yeah. then there's like the concrete yeah. pad and <laughs> <laughs> you put like no skate the stuff in the group <laughs> tape at the top and apparently you've got to issue with skateboarders around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we um, – as Rach mentioned, we have an OHS team. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're just, I guess, yeah, kind of uh, adapting to the modern needs while also, you know, dealing with being a historic venue as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to, I guess, give like a bit of an overview on what Gabba is like? Yeah, it's history. Um, yeah. yeah, like it's we we know. Well, like I know that it's like heritage list, list yeah. and stuff like that. So, do you want to give us like a little bit more of an idea on the the backstory of Gabon Bar? Yeah. So, Gabon Bar was established in 1863. Um, it was built. I was, I was born just before. <laughs> <laughs> you look, you look amazing. Uh, it's like it's it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, it was built for a gentleman named Reverend William Lambie Nelson. Um. And he was a uh, Presbyterian minister, I believe, but then became a grazier. Um, and, yeah, so he was built as his private home. Mm. Um, and then he passed away and his son, Hugh, um, as happened back in that day, uh, became the owner of Gabon Bar, but he was actually off doing other things. So right. he offered the property uh, to Queensland's governors as their summer residence. 
Uh, as so, you, as you do. yeah, so yeah, <laughs> take, take it for my the mansion. Take it for yeah. the <laughs> so, yeah, Gavin Barr became um, for many years the summer residence of uh, Queensland's governors. Yeah, right. So, they would bring their families up here during the warmer months mm-hmm. from Brisbane. Yep. Uh, no aircon back in those days. Yep. So, it was yep. a nice relief for them, the cooler Toowoomba climates. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we discovered when we went back through the archives that they used it as a place of celebration. They had tea parties here. So the cool. ballroom was built in 1881. So they had Christmas parties, weddings. Uh, so it's always been a pr- place of celebration yeah. and love. Mm-hmm. And when we did rebrand Gabon Bar recently, uh, we really built into the branding that history and, again, that DNA of it being a place of where people – sort of had memories and had celebrations and would always look back on those times, you know, really fondly and as part of the tapestry of significant moments in their life. Yeah. So, yeah, that was Gabon Bar. Um, after it became, after it was used as a summer residence, it then became a private residence again. Uh, and in 2012, it then became a wedding venue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. When it was taken over in 2012, it was in a state of disrepair, I would say. Lantana everywhere. Um like is that? Horrible weed. Yeah. All right. No gardens. So really I'm a gardener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate gardens. Um, hey gardening. No, no yeah. gardens. So yeah, when they took it over, a full refurbishment um, was undertaken. Wow. Established all the gardens, um, really brought it back to life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you want to wow. talk a little bit about the rebranding? Mm. Yes, so we rebranded this year. Yes, yes, I do. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, we rebranded this year. Um, I guess we our original brand was established uh, in 2014 Mm -hmm. and at that time it was sort of built on the ideal of rustic charm Mm. and as the venue, um, I guess, grew over time, rustic charm no longer really felt like it had a great fit for us. And so what had happened was colours were being taken away, fonts were being taken away, things were being modified, but nothing was being added. So we felt like what we were working with was a skeleton brand. Mm. Um, And we also felt like there were a lot of new entrants to the industry. Mm. A lot of new wedding venues had popped up. And things started to feel a little bit the same. Mm. Like there was lots of nestled there was lots of spectacular, there was lots of words that were popping up that were yep. just making it harder for us to feel different. Yeah. Um, and so the time had really come to rebrand. Yep. And so part of that process, it actually took about a year and a half to rebrand Gabon Bar. Okay. Um, so part of the process was going back through the archives and really understanding the history and the significance of Gabon Bar itself. Mm. Um, and we, I guess, really allowed ourselves to do that so that we could uncover what made us special and what made us different. Yep. Um, and so at that time we actually decided to drop the homestead, so yeah. just yeah. become Gabon Bar. As soon as I said that in the intro, I was like, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, and, yeah, we we built the brand, I guess, around the legacy yep. Um the DNA, but also looking at uh, trying to be really decisive in who we were. Mm. What what do we stand for? What do we not? How do we really build in our all inclusive package? Yep. Our craftsmanship, our approach to service, and the creation of exceptional experiences. Um, we also wanted to differentiate ourselves, so creating a palette of language that we felt really helped us. Um, sell our attributes but also stand apart in the mm. industry and also moving away I guess it's when you do a rebrand it's always um, desirable to look at what's current in terms of fonts and colour mm. palettes but because it was a year and a half process we really didn't want to do it again yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> so we almost kind of rejected being fashionable for more embracing kind of timeless and elegance and yep. um, choosing fonts and colour palettes that, um, you know, the team went around Gabon Bar and 
We took pictures of trees and bark and colours we found and good. we took those colours and they built the brand colours that we have today. So yep. we really took our time to invest in understanding what it is about Gabon Bar that makes it so special yep. and build the brand from there. We just touched on the words like elegant um, was like definitely a word that I would think of when we're coming up for weddings here. And then when you do have the homestead, like you said, it does feel very rustic mm-hmm. and they're very different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Yes. And so, yeah, it's like you're definitely rustic isn't any weddings we come up for, Joel, they're not rustic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, uh, very yeah. on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. So it definitely yeah, feels like the branding really does tie into the w- I mean, where it already was, but now it actually really reflects Gabon yeah. Bar as a whole. I was going to say like a lot of, um, maybe I shouldn't say a lot of, but like I, f- I feel like the trend that uh, wedding venues seem, they almost seem like they get almost run into the ground and then they get like someone to come in and they get some life pump back into them. So the fact that you guys were already killing it and then could kind of, uh, realize like all right cool what's the new season that we're going to step into rather than like kind of getting to rock bottoms like you know when you go to yeah. you see those like pizzerias in like italy and it's like it, it's it's passed down from generation to generation it's like why is there no one this is me just binging gordon ramsay but, <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but like you get there and it's like there's no one in there eating because the pizza's crap yeah um it's like you didn't have crap pizza but yet you were like cool what's that next step which is which is really really cool to see yeah i think I personally look at everything we do and am always critiquing. Mm. So nothing in my eyes is good enough. (laughs) So I just don't think we'd ever become that pizzeria. Yeah, (laughs) fair, fair. Yeah. Can we talk about food? Yeah. The Gabon Bar food? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Far out, that is the thing. Like, yeah, we're going up to Gabon Bar, they're like, the food. Yeah, like, (laughs) like, like, good dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone you speak to, like, it's a running joke, like, it is going to be amazing food when you go up to Gabon Bar. So that's an all in-house team. It's not separate outside. Yeah. So we have a team of um, three full-time chefs at Gavin Bar led by our head chef, Jennifer. Um, And we've recently just released our new menu um, in June. So that's been very exciting. But it's an in-house catering team. We don't have any external caterers. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And does that change over seasons? Like as far as um, like menu options? Is that a regular change in um, like seasonality or anything like that? We don't have a seasonal menu. The menu that we've put together, which we often refresh yearly, um, we basically make it so that couples know if they're booking, you know, a year um, or more in advance what they can choose for their wedding day and they will be um, delivered that food option. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so it's not necessarily seasonal. Yeah, but there's like different options like if we're coming in and we're getting married here, there's a few different options for dinner and everything that we could. Oh, absolutely. There are so much to choose from. So um, during the garden party we have a two-hour time frame outside where we serve like food and drinks Mm -hmm. um, and they have the option of like canapes and an appetizer and there's lots of variety there. Um, And we really encourage that couples choose what they love to eat on their wedding day. We cater specifically for dietaries. I think it's nice to keep the season in mind as well um there's nothing better than a gelato cart in summer (laughs) um and then in terms of main meals we've got lots of different options available um from like the classic alternate drop to um what we call the duo um which is our chef solution to people fight um Fighting over the classical center drop. Um, and then we've got like a feasting option as well. Um, we still do cocktail weddings. Yep. Um, so there really is something for everyone. And we find, um, you know, a lot of couples choose different type of options to suit their day and their theme as well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I've seen like you guys offer kind of everything, but like we, you guys offer like gelato carts and stuff like that. You guys offer... I'm normally flat out working, but um, no, he's not. Yeah, no, I'm, not. I'm, 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 I'm eating and drinking. Um, but, like, food. Yeah. but during like canopy, I've seen like you guys like have the chefs come out and like they do like a cook up and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so we've had live cooking as one oh, of the awesome. options during garden party where there was four different cuisines and you could um, select that in planning time, and then you'd actually have the chef come out and cook for you yep. um, in the garden. So it was really interactive. But That's a vibe. yeah, and our chefs just love customizing. So mm. I know. Um, I'm getting married here in March and we're having um, why, sweets. Why not shooting your wedding? No, <laughs> Get off. <laughs> we're no, having um, sweets in the garden party after yeah. lunch. So um, the chefs just love customising and really kind of working with couples to, you know, deliver on their day. Yeah. Mm. There's big talk at the moment. Are you guys um, for like pre-ceremony? Do you guys have like one, you know, a, a drink on arrival for guests? 
So I guess, um, sorry, couples are really welcome to add a drink on arrival. We've yep. got cocktail bar options, um, French champagne on arrival. Yep. Um, we often find that couples are really loving to add that element before mm. their day, yep. even just a nice sparkling on arrival. The concierge greets them and then the team are there just serving drinks prior to ceremony. It works really well. Yeah, yep. that's great. Mm. I want to like hash on like client experience or just like not even necessarily client experience because like me being a vendor, talking to other vendors in the industry, we all speak so incredibly high of Gabin Bar. Um, but just like it's the little things that you guys do that I think set you guys apart, like rocking up from the minute that you get out of your car in the car park, you hear music playing in the garden. Mm. Yeah. Like there's just so many of like those little things that you do that you go to another venue and you're like, oh, I miss Gabin Bar. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the music? <laughs> yeah, I could have sing to myself. No one wants that. <laughs> Um, but no, I think like there's just so many things that you guys do mm -hmm. in that sense that really just like elevates you above the rest. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys want to like elaborate on anything like that or the decision process or how that kind of came about. Yeah, I think we have, um, I guess like a term and we call it like the Gavin Bar way. Um, Chloe, Ange and myself, we have like designed like a bit of a booklet, which is like our um, exceptional experiences handbook. So we really coach the team in how we want them to speak and how we want them to greet couples, to greet vendors, um, how we lap napkins, mm -hmm. how the team walk and hold themselves. Yeah. Um, the pyrotechnician that works at Gavin Bar always jokes with me because the team go out to the bin out the back and they've got their hand behind their back. <laughs> um, but you know, it's in ground in the team from yeah. when they're trained, you know, and it is a couple's, you know, wedding day. It's their best yeah. day of their life. And, um, there's no do overs. So we really want to make sure that we just give them a great experience. And it's not just about the couples, it's about the guests and the vendors as well. So mm. I think, um, one of our values is, you know, we value great people doing great things and we really want to set our team up for success so that they can provide a great experience for the guests as well. Yeah. yeah. It's even like the communication is obviously shows, you know, how different vendors work because we'll be down there and, um, you know, one of you guys will come up and be like, do you want to do a line check? And you're like, I would love to do a line yeah. check. <laughs> and like, just like little things and like that. Like in yeah. the ear, you're just yeah. like, all right, uh, they're going to do a line test, just uh, turn that on. Yeah, yeah. just like little yeah. things like that. Like mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you work with so many people, but you just, it's like you're, you're, you know, the, you know any problems that could arise mm. and you're just onto it ahead of time. Mm. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah, we, well, we need to do this. I'm sure it happens with the florist mm. and the stylist and everything like that mm. as well. Like as soon as they're here, they're like, okay, cool. What do you need? Mm. Um, and you probably, I mean, you don't take it for granted, but that isn't everywhere. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that's, yeah, if we're trying to get a line check somewhere else, it might be a different story. Yeah. Like it's, it's and maybe that's thing. more where I was kind of going with the, what I was just saying before was like, going to other venues and stuff like that, experiencing other things, you pro you might not experience it as much as maybe we do. Mm -hmm. And so we go to all these different places somewhat all over, all over Australia and nothing compares. Mm -hmm. Like truly, like uh, there might be one. Yeah. But like, yeah, I just think it's awesome. Yeah. I and feel I, privileged. I do think it is experience as well. Mm -hmm. The fact that we've been operating for 12 years, mm -hmm. but uh, within that 12 years, it's constantly that process of asking how do, how do we do things? How do we make ourselves exceptional? And not just saying that we're exceptional, but actually mm -hmm. believing it and doing it. Yeah. And the team are so good at spotting those one percenters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you all the time, like we'll have email summaries from the wedding yeah. and they'll be pointing out things that they need, like, oh, we need shoe polish for the grooms we need you know they're just mm -hmm. always thinking how can we really meet all the needs of a couple and their guests and our vendors on the day is this a debrief of a wedding you have yeah. like an email oh that's amazing yeah so every uh, wedding 220 wow. <laughs> um and the whole team get the debrief so mm -hmm. we all know how the day went and there's points for sales to follow up on yeah. there's um, customer mm -hmm. experience points to follow up on. There's points for the chefs to follow up on. And it's, I guess it's just that way of doing things that we constantly question mm -hmm. and think, how do we make ourselves better? How do we build on this mm -hmm. rather than being like, oh, we're exceptional. We're, we're great. Everyone tells us yeah. that we yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, how do we yeah, continually enhance the experience and make it better for couples, guests and their vendors? Yeah. And even after wedding days, we send out a survey to our couples. Yeah. So 
they can answer anonymously yep. about um, we get them to rate the wedding planning experience before the wedding, on the day, the gardens, the drink, the food, because we really do want them to be able to be very open and honest because if we don't know these things, we can't improve. So, And then we sent out some to vendors last year that, as yeah. well. So I think we are just looking for those opportunities to improve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you find, I mean, you as a business perspective, I'm sure you'd write across it, but do you find a lot of people are, they've either been to a wedding here before and then they're getting married. Is that like a majority of people coming to Gavin Bar? Or I'd say a lot of our couples have been guests at Gavin Bar. Yep. Um and it and that's why I guess um it's so important for the guests to have such a wonderful experience here. Um but we do also have a lot of couples who may not have been to Gavin Bar before, yep. especially if they're traveling interstate um, yep. or overseas. Yep. But I would say that a large demographic of our couples have actually been to weddings here, which is great because it's nice to for them to have seen and experienced yeah. Gavin Bar in both kind of ways. Yeah. And that's where the client experience does pay off. You know, you're Absolutely. putting in all this effort and like, yeah, you've got, you know, another 50 couples that are at the wedding and they can see how you act and how you present yourself on the day. Mm-hmm. And of course they want to come back here. Yeah. There's nothing better than doing a viewing with a couple who were at a wedding a month ago and just said, oh, the food was great. The team was amazing because they already know that what I'm saying and what I'm telling them is going to yeah. be reflected on their day. Yeah. 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 And yeah. As far as people like obviously being a, a big destination um, wedding venue, uh, if they are uh, interstate overseas, is it just kind of like a, a, a tour online or something like that that you would show people around? So during COVID, it really um, helped us pivot and yep. we did start um, offering virtual viewings at that time. So we do have the option of virtual tours, which yep. a lot of our um, interstate and international couples do use. Mm -hmm. Um, which is really wonderful. And then we do have a planning service where we can do their planning meetings virtually as well. So essentially you can, um, and we have had couples never actually come on site before getting married here on the day. Um, Yesterday's couple were from the UK. So a lot of that planning was done virtually. But I think it just provides that other resource for people who don't have the time to come on site for the viewing. Yeah. What time do people usually bump in on the day? Like um, the girls arriving for like hair and makeup and stuff like that. So the retreat opens at eight o'clock on the morning of the wedding for them to get ready. So we usually find that they kind of start rolling in around that eight o'clock yeah. and we do have a bridal attendant greet them, um, brews to coffee in the morning before doing a rehearsal and then getting stuck into hair and makeup. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Is there a hard, sorry, last one. Is there a hard, <laughs> is there a hard and fast like uh, finish time for Gavin Bar? So drinks and music conclude at 11 p.m. at Gavin Bar with Amazing. the venue closing oh. shortly after. So we usually find that things wind up at about 11.30. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Especially it's if they're having that like pre-ceremony drink as well. That's like, you yeah. know, <laughs> it's nine a big hours of drinking. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and is there like any noise restrictions or anything like that around or not too bad? No. Because I feel like yeah. my, actually my best party was here. Mm. With Silent Shout, yep, in that ballroom, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, flipping yeah, yeah, epic. Yeah. I was like, I was looking to see, but I was like, I was looking at the glass. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was cranking. So I guess there's there's no issues with noise around here. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like, so we're so lucky, um, and we've got great relationships with all the neighbours as yeah, well, which is wonderful. We have neighbourhood Christmas parties, and oh, so we've yeah. got you know everyone on side, which is wonderful because I think you know. It's just so lovely hearing the music throughout the gardens and then in the homestead later in the night having the band and yeah. that vibe's really important. So we're really lucky in terms of noise restrictions here. Yeah. Oh, mm. that's great. Mm. Um, one thing that I don't know how I heard of this and it might not even be true, but do you guys have a higher than standard, uh, I don't know if there's a standard, but a higher count um, of staff to guest ratio? Yes, we do. <laughs> I thought so. I, I heard it like probably three years ago, I don't know who I heard it from. And I was like, maybe that's like why things just run better because Mm -hmm. no one's ever got to like, no one's ever been like, Oh, waiting at the bar for three Mm -hmm. hours and Mm -hmm. waiting for a drink or I don't know, just like little bits and pieces like that. Like that's so what is a one percenter. Yeah, Yeah. it is. We have um, on average one waitstaff person to every 10 of the guests. So the level of service is very high. Mm. But on any given wedding day, we can have up to 25 staff work a wedding from the team that prep the estate in the morning and, you know, do the mowing and the blower vacuum to the kitchen team, to the setup team. So I really do feel that that's the point of difference here at Gavin Bar. Um, Couples are not having to worry about 
any of that Yum. on the day and our team will really just look after it so they can enjoy their day with their family and friends. You know, mum's not having to put out seating allocations or yeah. dad's putting up arbors. We really want to take um, that from couples so that they can enjoy their day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that is such a big thing. Like there, There's a weddings where they're like, oh, we're going to DIY it, and then everyone's just working the whole mm. day yeah. versus the ones yeah. where we can actually enjoy our son or daughter's yeah. wedding and actually enjoy it and be a part of it. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah it's, a big, it's a big shift for sure. And it's often what's most important to couples is yeah. that they just yeah. want to enjoy the day. They don't yeah. want mum and dad doing those things. So Yeah, yeah. perfect. So yeah. Touch a little bit on preferred suppliers. Um, yeah. I feel you'd be good to chat about that. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about like preferred supplier? Like obviously, not obviously because no one knows, but uh, <laughs> I'm a preferred vendor here um, and I do get a lot of work um, via that. Um, whereas I am on a couple of other different vendor lists um, with different venues and, you know, I don't see as much from that. So do you want to explain, I guess, even from like for a couple's point of view, mm -hmm. um, what's important about a vendor, li a recommended vendor list? Mm -hmm. So at Garden Bar, once couples have booked, they have access to My Garden Bar, which is a planning portal that Chloe was chatting about. Yep. So on there, we have a vendor directory and essentially there's vendors spanning every kind of industry on the vendor directory. And they each have a profile that shares information about their contact details, what they do, what they offer, um, imagery associated to their field. Yep. And it just is a highly curated list that we can put forward to our couples of vendors who've worked here in the past, um, done a really great job worked well with our team, but mm. also delivered on for our couples. Yep. So no one who hasn't been here before isn't on the list. Yep. Um, we also love to kind of keep the list feeling really fresh because we know things and trends change as yeah. well. Um, and it is a highly curated list. We don't have every videographer in Australia on the list. Um, they are a handpicked um, range of vendors just to make sure that they're working really well with the team and that we can vouch for them. And yep. they offer a similar experience to what the couple will have at Gavin Bar. Yep. Mm. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Because, yeah, it's, I mean, that's kind of the goal for every uh, – most vendors, I guess, is like to get – the best way to get work is to be on a venue's preferred supplier list mm. yeah. out yeah. of like every kind of marketing, advertising, and everything like that because essentially if a couple's trusting you with their wedding, they kind of trust who you trust yeah. straight away. Absolutely. You know, so it just kind of reflects really well and it's – um yeah, it's just good to like what do you look for as far as from a vendor yeah. perspective? What are you looking for, for, for like from a vendor? I think starting from that kind of sales um, timeline is that the vendors are getting back to the couples really quickly with inquiries. Mm. I think vendors play such an important role on the day and sometimes even in that initial booking phase. Yeah, for sure. I know that like some couples won't like if they aren't having Joel, like they're not booking up for us. So like it, often it's sometimes they won't secure a date with us until they know that their favourite vendor is wow. available. So I think getting back to um, couples really quickly yeah. is important. Um, I think you know, keeping your promise, you know, arriving on time, um, being really present with a couple on the day. I think that's, that's also really helpful. Um, and that your, you know, your work matches what they've kind of booked as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I guess from my point of view as well, um, with photographers and videographers, it is sharing those albums and, yeah. you know, so that we can showcase your work and also help, help us sell the venue. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so if, we find photographers and videographers are unwilling or, you know, mm. unable to share albums so you've with had us. That before, have you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Especially back in the day. Yeah. I feel like 10 years ago, like photographers were like, no, that's our work. Like yeah. if they want to use it, yeah. they have to pay for it. And yeah. now it's like, take yeah. it all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, so have it. It's so like social media wasn't that big back yeah. then where True. venues weren't booking you work. Mm. Yeah. So it was very much like, well, they've got to pay for it. Yeah. Whereas mm. now it's like, it makes so it's just like, it's super close minded to be like, we want to provide you absolutely everything we mm. can because people know it's like venue. Then it's like, you know, celebrant or photographer, it kind of goes down that hierarchy. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be pretty silly not to. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like we, we really respect copyright and yeah. we are very grateful for um, the work that is shared with us. Yeah. But uh, I feel like it helps Everyone in our industry, yeah, yeah. Um, florists want to see their work mm. and venues want to see yeah. the wedding and yeah. it's just nice when we can all share yeah. um, everything and get more work. And, yeah. yeah, it just lifts everyone up <laughs> Yeah, as exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then like, as far as can I touch a little bit on like 220 weddings a year is a lot. Mm -hmm. Is there like marketing, advertising, is there any way that you guys um, are trying to get a majority of the weddings here? 
like is a social media way bigger than what it used to be or is it like mainly everyone's coming to the website like you don't have open days yeah so like outside of people actually coming here or they've already been to a wedding is there any other forms of like yeah social media or advertising that you guys mainly move towards yeah so um i guess we do social media we do seo uh our website's really important it's yep. often the first hello for couples yeah definitely um, so that would be like blog content, imagery, constantly making sure it's updated. Yep. Um, we do do search ads. Mm -hmm. We um, have just uh, for the last year started our TikTok channel. Yeah. So we've, go. got, <laughs> we've got two TikToks. Um, we've got the main Gabin Bar channel and we've also got Dan the Gardener. Yeah, okay. who, oh, sick. Yeah, who gives um, behind the scenes look at what goes into the gardens. That's awesome. Uh, that's we, really cool. Yeah, that's we, my, that's yeah. the, I'm getting way into golf at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's like the same porn. thing. It's like you follow the club and then you also follow the ground. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we have Pinterest. So I guess we, uh, I, I mean, my approach to marketing is that you can never stand still. One channel might work for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, something new will come in and you need to be continually optimizing and testing and making sure that you are enhancing every channel, um, that yeah. you're utilizing. Yeah. So, um, and if, if you're not using it, if it doesn't have a purpose anymore, then you should be sort of getting rid of it. On. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think for us, we have, from the moment I sort of started with Gabin Bar, we've always had a really big focus on SEO. Yep, it's yeah. really important to build a brand, but then also deliver that organic traffic. Yep. Yeah. Um, I feel like 2024 was a year for that where like, if you were complacent, you know, we've been busy up until 2024 and a lot of people this has happened to yep. where this has worked for the last 10 years yep. and 2024 it isn't anymore. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. yeah, you just kind of rested on your laurels and yeah, that's 100% happened to me where now I'm just, I'm meta advertising like crazy and it's the, it's been insane the amount of like increased bookings because of that. But everything that used to work doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Like if I just post something on, on social media, three people saw it like mm. awesome <laughs> you know, like i spent yeah. 17 hours making that real yeah but it's um yeah how quickly it shifts and like just adjusting to those shifts as well yeah and even on each channel i mean you'll find on instagram you will do um pictures of the venue and they'll do really well for a month and then the next month you post pictures of the venue and it's like oh that doesn't do well anymore. So it's, yep. I think from a marketing point of view it's always testing and yeah. trialing new things and um, yeah, some of the TikTok views are insane at the moment, really? but Instagram really difficult at the moment. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. um, and I'm big on data. I just love like yeah. every day looking at analytics and love like, seeing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just seeing, I guess what platforms work for us and yeah. what we need to optimize and yeah. t testing are you, as well. Are you seeing like conversion from TikTok? Like you might get views, but are you seeing like conversion? Like are people coming over and be like, I found you on TikTok yeah. and I want to get married. Yeah, wow. definitely. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I just thought it was just all bots. I just was like, yeah. how, many, how many, 17 million people? Come on. Yeah. No, I find like I just love TikTok. I think it's such an interesting channel and it's very different to other social media platforms yeah. and people definitely want to be entertained and engaged before mm -hmm. they want to be sold to. Um, but we are definitely getting um, feedback that, oh, I found you on TikTok Sick. and can I meet the chef? I saw her on TikTok. Oh, wow. and, oh that's awesome. Yeah, so... Um, it's a really fun sort of channel to be playing around with. And That's so cool. Yeah. Apart from age bracket, people coming through TikTok, like uh, demographic wise, do you find any different? Like we, we shot a wedding last weekend. She was from like 1999 was born, but yeah. it's going to be very soon. Like all couples are going to be from like 2000s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you see like a big demographic shift in the, in younger people coming through? Uh, I'd say our core audience is still 25 to 34. Yeah. Um, and that population, um, sorry, that demographic on TikTok is definitely growing. Mm. Um, but I think we were at an industry event and they said, you know, the interesting thing about our industry is we age but our customer doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so we have to find where they are. Yep. And I think for us TikTok is definitely where our future audience lies. Fair so. Point. Um, we're obviously still building Instagram and we're still building Facebook and that's a big focus, but TikTok has become another big focus for us because, mm -hmm. um, a really interesting point. Mm, yeah. I had never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go make TikTok. Now. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, great on TikTok. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it. Like, I would be, but yeah. I'm just getting into something. Yeah. <laughs> like I was 20, 
what was I, 23 when I started shooting weddings. And same thing, every couple- That would have like, been like 45 all, years ago. There was, yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of couples that were older than me and you felt really insecure because you're shooting like 30-year-old mm. weddings and stuff. Mm. Yeah. And now like I shoot weddings and they don't know what gone in 60 seconds is. And I'm like, <laughs> you probably don't either. But like all these people that were born in 2000 Eleanor. and like all these, yeah, all these movie references, you know, mm. and everything that isn't relevant anymore. Like I'm still 30. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, um, it's definitely right where it's, you got to s- attract a younger and younger demographic as you get older mm-hmm. and stay relevant in those circles. Yeah. Yeah. which is tough. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask before, like you guys are obviously very passionate about the one percenters and like just the client experience and all those types of things. Where does that come from? Like, is there like, is the owner of Gabon bar, like just the best flipping like philosophical person ever? Like, where's this, is it from you guys? Like, where's, where's that sort of coming from? Yeah, I think in the early days, um, Gavin Bar was very much like led by Isaac, who is the director of the business. And he has still a lot to do with um, the wider management team. But um, Chloe and myself on the ground here now, I would say it's more like for our team, it's more directly led from us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always worked in service. I'm very passionate about people. Um, and I just like there's nothing better like yeah. that. You know, I love doing a viewing and I'm so excited for the couple, you know, and selling gab bars not hard because I believe in the product yeah. and what we're going to deliver. And I know that my teams are just have got it down pat, you know? So I definitely think, um, these days probably more so led by the direct management team within the business, but, yeah. um, we're really lucky to have such a strong leader who, um, you know, backs Chloe in doing a rebrand and that we, yeah. you know, did it, um, at the right time and really allows us to kind of make improvements around the estate and invest into the things that we really care about. Yeah. No, it's, it's fantastic. I think, mm. I think what you guys do here is truly phenomenal. Um, definitely industry leaders for sure. Um, yeah. Right. Super exceptional from both a vendor and client point of view. Like I've never, I talked to clients still after the wedding days and they're just like, it was just the best day ever. They were so amazing. Blah, 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 blah. blah. So yeah. Hats off to you guys. Thank you. <laughs> you guys do amazing. <laughs> well, I think we should wrap it up. Yeah. Is there it's anything a, else yeah. you want to add uh, before we do wrap it up? Where, where can people find you and all that kind of thing apart from your TikTok? And <laughs> yeah, yeah, find us on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your TikTok handle? Um, it's at Gabon Bar underscore. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you are like recently engaged or on the fence about booking a viewing, like we'd love to meet you. Um, it's so nice to be able to come and see and experience Garden Bar for yourself. Um, and we're just, yeah, really keen to meet new couples and show them the experience that everyone talks so fondly of. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Definitely. Thank you yeah. so much well, for coming thank on. You. And thank, thank you so both. much for hosting us as well. It's yeah. amazing. No, it's so good to have you both here. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the Wedco Podcast. We're dropping a fresh episode every week featuring industry professionals dishing out the wedding wisdom you need to turn those dreams into reality. Make sure you are following us on social media. You have those notifications turned on so we can help plan your wedding day. Your dream wedding day just got a whole lot easier. Thanks for listening.